I'm Dylan, I'm a 5th grade science teacher by day and an artist and reptile keeper by night. In today's video I'm going to show you guys how to interact with blood pythons. I'm going to talk a little bit about my guy Kona, he's 2 years old, he is getting really big and he's very different from ball pythons. If you're familiar with ball pythons, they're very easy to interact with. Many of my ball pythons, uh, I can open up the tub and just reach right in and no issues, I'm not worried about getting bit. But that's not the case with this guy or this girl. There are many kind of snakes that you need to approach differently when you're going to interact with them. Helpful tips that I learned from uh, New England Reptile Keepers Nerds channel. I learned that snakes operate in about four modes. They got thinking mode, which is the only mode that you actually want to handle them in. Sleeping mode, feeding mode, and fear mode are the other three modes. Those three are times when you don't want to handle them unless you break that mode and get them into thinking mode and I'll show you how I go about doing that with Kona, my blood python. So up here I have a bioactive enclosure with my BCI boa linguini. Um, there's live sigonium and some other live plants in there, isopods, dairy cow, porcelia lavis, dairy cow isopods. She's doing fantastic in here and down here I have another 40 gallon exoterra tank. Kona is hiding under his rock right here and this tank is very simple. A lot of blood python keepers do keep their environments very simple. A lot of them just keep them on paper because when they go to the bathroom and they don't go all that often, this species has a tendency to hold their feces for some reason. It's weird. It's just the way that this snake lives. It's an ambush predator so it doesn't move a whole lot. So maybe that has something to do with uh, the species not going to the bathroom all that often. But when they do go to the bathroom, holy smokes, does it make an absolute mess. So that's probably why a lot of blood python keepers just keep them on paper because it's easier to clean, especially those who are breeding them and have quite a few specimens. But it looks like his fog machine is going on right now. I have that come on about four times a day for 15 minutes every few hours. And he just pokes his head out and he enjoys the humidity. This species does need a lot of humidity, 60 to 70% on average. We'll open this up here, get a little better look. Ooh, there goes the fog. So this is Python bronchersmi. There are three different species of blood python. I believe this one is the true blood python. The species comes from areas like Malaysia, Sumatra, Indonesia. And this species gets about four to six feet. Some rare cases, there have been about seven footers. And they are a very chunky kind of snake. They're like, when they're full grown, they're like thick sausages and they can weigh anywhere between 20 and 30 pounds. So that's like lifting a small child. Like these things get huge. Oh, and he's kind of starting to get himself into position because he thinks that maybe he is getting fed. Right now, this is what food mode looks like. This is an ambush predator, so all he's going to really do is sit as still as possible and wait for something unfortunate enough to get close enough to him and he'll strike and super fast, lightning fast strike. You didn't, wouldn't even believe for as thick and chunky as these, are, these animals are that they can move as fast as they do. But you can kind of see how his head is shaped like a leaf and he does whatever he's buried into this substrate. He is very well camouflaged. In here I have lots of leaf litter and cocoa husk and like kind of forest floor. He's only two years old, so he's got a lot of growing to do. And when he's full grown, there's no way that really any hide that you get at like a local pet store is going to be big enough. So I'm definitely going to have to make my own. And I will be jazzing up his environment a little bit more here soon. Get him a definitely big water bowl because these guys do soak and they will soak if they have the opportunity. Yeah, I'll probably make my own caves and uh, jazz it up and make it a little more jungly in here using my foam and uh, sanded grout and all that materials. So and you can see those holes on the front of his face. There's roughly, I see three in my frame of view, but he's a roughly, I don't know if it's four to six uh, labial heat pits. Those holes on his face are heat pits that allow him to sense like heat or thermal vision. So even if it's pitch black where this animal, if he uh, didn't have any eyes, he would still be able to detect exactly where a warm object is. Okay, so since he is in, essentially, this is what his food mode looks like. He's an ambush predator. He's just going to wait for me to get close enough to him. I definitely don't want to just go sticking my hands in there. So I have a nice big snake hook. The first thing I'm going to do is just reach in here and pull this hide off of him. 
a little bit maybe. Maybe I'll just tap him a little bit and get him to maybe change his position so that I can go in there and take that hide off of him. Kind of mess with him a little bit. Okay, so now he's distracted. I can go in there and take that out. Look how big and beautiful he is. So again, I want to continue messing with him. I kind of just want to gently, very gently with the hook, just kind of rub and touch his body all over. And once he looks like he's kind of starting to run away, like, he's, oh gosh, okay, he's not feeding me. Uh, he's just messing with me. How do I get away? Once he starts to, looks like he's trying to get away is when I can go in there and somewhere from behind his back section, pick him up gently, gently move underneath him with the snake hook. Tongue flickers, that is a positive sign. He's definitely thinking, but I still don't think I feel comfortable just reaching in there and grabbing him. Once you mess with him enough, distracted, I can go in there, maybe even at this point, and I reach behind. There we go. See, he's trying to get away now. I'm pretty much safe to go in there and just get him. Support as much of his body weight as he can. See, he's really trying to get away. Let's get a good look at this guy. This is Kona, the Sumatran short-tailed python, they also call them. Look at that nice spotted belly, so beautiful. So this is about what a two-year-old animal looks like, just a little bit of size comparison. And once you get him out, he's such a good boy. Again, now he's in thinking mode. When you see those quick tongue flickers and he's all stretched out, he's not coiled up, he's not frantically trying to get away. Uh, those tongue flickers, I always tell people, it's like how dogs like to sniff everything. They go and sniff uh, hydrants or lamp posts or other dogs' butts and stuff, and it's just their way of exploring the world. And that tongue is uh, picking up particles in the air and sending those particles to the roof of the mouth, and there's a organ called the Jacobson's organ, where those particles are then, uh, they transmit uh, messages to the brain so the brain can process what is in the animal's environment. Now, I don't know if you guys can see, but with uh, blood pythons, it's very important that uh, they need to have a ridge. There you go, you see like his backbone right there. Uh, these animals, like I mentioned, they do get real thick, real chunky, and he is a very heavy bodied animal, but you're for them to be healthy, you really want to see that ridge, that peak, their backbone, uh, that should be quite prominent. You guys are close up of this guy's face. Look at this guy. So I actually have a bath prepared for Kona, so let's go ahead and go uh, give him a little bit of a soak. Hey buddy, you gotta get back in the bath. So at this point, he's pretty good. He's just exploring, you can mess with him, and still always just being very respectful of the animal and paying attention to his body language and what he's thinking and feeling. I don't want to stress him out. Every time I take my animals out, I want to create positive experiences for them. And it's through those positive experiences where they learn to build trust and realize that, okay, yeah, nothing bad ever happens when this guy takes me out. It's all just positive experience. There's beautiful patterns on this guy. As they age, see that darker kind of looks brown here in the image, but as these guys age, they turn from like really golden, kind of very bright when they're young, and then that dorsal becomes like a real blood red as they mature. Hence the name Blood Python. And their patterns are very like all over the place. Like I said, they blend in with the forest floor very well. All they do is bury underneath the substrate a little bit. This species is strictly terrestrial, so you'll never find them like in trees or climbing. So yeah, we'll let this guy soak for a little bit, and in the meantime, we'll go ahead and clean up his habitat a little bit. So yeah, and that's kind of how you want to approach uh, if you're going to handle an exotic snake or something and do it respectfully. And I hope you guys found today's video educational and entertaining. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you to all my continued subscribers. If you're new to the channel, do me a huge favor. If reptiles and art and science co uh, content interests you, go ahead and hit the subscribe button for me. And also hit that YouTube like button as it lets the YouTube algorithm know that people are engaging with my content and they enjoy my content. I'll keep you guys posted as soon as I start doing any customizations to Kona's habitat here. In the meantime, thank you guys again. Stay safe out there in this crazy world of ours. And I will see you in the next one.